Hello, Holy Wermod here. Welcome to tutorial 19 in the G Lua Pro series, where we're going to be taking a look at triggers and custom brush entities. So let's start by looking here. It's a little bit different than last tutorial. Instead of the player spawn, we have init post entity, and that's going to be called whenever all the entities are loaded on the game mode. Now here we have our trigger, which is going to be int create, and we're going to be making the brush custom. Now, a brush entity is slightly different. It's actually invisible for the most part, and I'll show you exactly what it's doing. So this is perfect for a trigger. For those who don't know what a trigger is, a trigger is essentially an invisible block or object, which when you touch it, something happens. Or while you're touching it, something can happen. Or when you leave and stop touching it, then something will happen. So let's go into the folders right here. We have game modes, entities, and remember we have anim custom here. Now, instead of making a folder, you can also create entities making a file. So let's create a new file and we're going to call this custom or we're going to call it brush underscore custom just like that dot lua and we're going to open that up and normally you would be adding uh, add CS lua file so add CS lua file just like this however we're not going to be doing that because the brush is actually only used on the server side so Let's go look at the base entity that we're going to be using for this brush. So we go to base and go entities, entities right here, and base underscore brush. So as you can see right here, these are all actually server only. Uh, well, at least these three are server only. So we have start touch, in touch, and touch. And that's going to be exactly what a trigger would use. Now, if we go here, so we don't need this. We're going to make the base, base underscore brush, just like that. And the type, we're going to be setting to brush. So as you can see, it's just like it is right here. And that's fine. So that's how we identify that we're making a brush. Now, something nice that you can do, because remember, int is a table, you can actually assign custom key values. So let's say that we want to have our trigger, trigger between some coordinates. So I'm going to get some preset coordinates that I have for you. We're going to have point A and point B. And point A and point B are going to act like the corners of our trigger. So they're going to be corners on opposing sides of a cube. And this is going to tell us where to draw the box, which is going to be our trigger. So because this is server only, so we're going to have if server and that's it, no clients or anything like that. And then we're going to use initialize. So we're going to have initialize right here. And in initialize, something very important that you need for a trigger to work is to set it solid. Because if it doesn't have any collision to a player, then the player can actually trigger it. So very important to do that. And then we're going to be doing set collision bounds. And we're going to be using WS. And we're having a vector 1 and a vector 2. Well, we have vector 1 and vector 2 up here. Now remember to address anything that is related to int, in this case, which is left of the colon, you must use self. So instead of int.pointA, we have to use self.pointA, just like that. And likewise for point B as well. So put self, point B, just like that. Alrighty. So now that we have initialize set up, we're going to be using three different functions, which actually you saw from here, might be faster just to copy and paste this to save you some time. So we have our start touch, our end touch, and our touch. So start touch, as it sounds, is when you start initializing your touch with the trigger. And the entity here is going to be the entity which is touching the trigger. So it can be, like I said, in prior tutorials, it could be a player, it can be a vehicle, it can be a weapon, it could be any type of entity. Uh, in touch, of course, is when you stop touching, and touching is while you're touching. So I did mention that, but I just want to recap. So if the entity by default does not have these values, you can actually give the entity these values by setting trigger and then putting true. And now this entity, if it were not a brush, would have access to all three of these hooks, which is very nice, but we don't need that. So that's how you do it, though, if you're trying to trigger, for example, an NPC or something, which we'll go over in a later tutorial. So let's go over start touch. So let's say that anybody who touches this, we're going to say that we're initializing 
healing soup. So they're going to start healing when they touch it. And the entity, when it comes into contact with this trigger, we're going to have a sound play, just so we know that the entity has successfully touched the trigger. Next, we want to actually do a check when it's outside of the trigger. So we'll say print, and this is for our console only. Remember, it's server-side only for these. And healing soup. So we'll just say our soup is now no longer healing us. And then we want to emit another sound to tell us that we are no longer being healed. Okay, that's good. And lastly, let's go here and say is valid. And we're going to make sure the entity is actually a valid entity, which is triggering this trigger. And we're going to say if the entity is a player, then I'm going to show you some fun stuff with health that you can use for a player. Since the entity is of type player, we're going to set the health of the player, and we're going to use MathClamp, which is from the math library, of course, and it limits the input right here between two values. So the current value which we're going to be limiting is health. So we're going to set health equal health plus one every single um, tick, because touch runs every tick of the server, just so you know. And then we're going to set the minimum bound to zero and the maximum health that the player can have to get max health just like that so we can't exceed the maximum health of the player alrighty so that's everything there and we should have everything closed off just like that now we're ready to go in and test the code so I'll see you in the server in just one second alrighty so we are now in the server and this is where I set the vector position is the corner right here, the bottom corner, and the opposing corner is going to be the corner over here. So that's the box for the trigger. So we go in, and there was a sound which played, said initializing healing soup, and when we go out, there's that sound saying ending healing soup. So I'm going to take some damage really quick. There we go. And as you can see, it heals me to my max health, which is 100. And there we go. So that's how you create a trigger. It doesn't have to be healing. You can put whatever event that you want to happen or whatever function you want to happen. But that's how you'd create an end game trigger and how you'd util utilize uh, Entity Brush. Notice, like I said, it is invisible. So this is perfect for triggers. If you have any questions about that, feel free to leave so in the comment section below. As always, if you like the material, feel free to like, subscribe, share, comment, and bell, and all that fun stuff. See you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out Hexane Networks for affordable and high-performance server hosting. That's Hexane Networks, whose link is in the description below.